I'm Sherry Bosher reporting at the Transcatheter Cardiovascular Therapeutics meeting in San Francisco. Dr. Philippe Steg reported on the Euromax study and the benefits of giving bivalirudin in the ambulance before a patient arrives in the hospital for PCI. There was the Horizons AMI trial, which was a landmark trial that established bivalirudin as a key treatment for primary PCI a few years ago with a mortality reduction, a bleeding reduction, but a, a signal for increased acute stent thrombosis. Like any good trial, Horizons raised new questions. And the first question is, how do we apply this evidence for the benefit of bavarudin in Europe, where most of the care for patients with STEMI is actually treat started early in the pre-hospital setting in the ambulance? Is the ratio of benefit to safety or benefit to risk the same in the pre-hospital setting? That was one question mark. The second question is, can we get rid of the increased acute stent thrombosis signal that was seen in Horizons? In particular, can we get rid of this with either the novel P2I12 inhibitors or a prolonged PCI infusion? The third question is, how do the results hold up when we uh, apply them in a contemporary practice? And contemporary practice has changed since Horizons. First of all, in Europe, a lot of investigators, even in the US now, are using the radial approach, therefore reducing bleeding at the access site. A lot of investigators are using P2I, the novel P2I12 inhibitors, which might reduce stent thrombosis but increase bleeding. And uh, the use of GPI, which was the standard of, uh, and was part of, uh, was systematic in the standard of care arm of Horizons, is no longer systematic in routine clinical practice. In fact, nowadays only a minority of PCI, primary PCI patients, get uh, GPIs. And therefore, we wanted to test bivirudin in this context. And what we did is we found 2,219 patients in nine European countries, mostly France, Germany, the Netherlands, and Denmark, and five other countries. And we randomized them in the ambulance while being transported to primary PCI to either a control arm of heparin, either unfractionated heparin or, or inox heparin, with or without GPI. The GPI was not mandated per protocol. It was not artificially increased. It was as per institutional practice. So what they do routinely, guideline evidence-based practice versus a bivalutin regimen that was started also in the pre-hospital setting with a bolus, an infusion, and the option to have a prolonged infusion for four hours after PCI. But eventually we enrolled 2,219 patients, and there are very standard patient population there, just what we expected. The vast majority of them, 95% of them, were recruited in the ambulance in the pre-hospital setting. And we found a clear reduction in the primary endpoint, and the primary endpoint was a dual composite of death and major bleeding. And the definition for major bleeding was more stringent than in Horizons. We didn't count access site hematomas. We got rid of that, and we had a clear definition for major bleeding. So we had a clear reduction in, of that by approximately 40%, highly statistically significant. We had a clear reduction of the key secondary endpoint, which is the triple composite of death, reinfarction, and major bleeding. There was one downside to the bivirudin arm, which was an increased risk of acute stent thrombosis, 1.1% with bivirudin versus 0.2% with heparins and optional GPIs. Reporting for IMNG Medical Media, I'm Sherry Bosher.